Good morning. I'm going to take a look at the inner bones of Proverbs 9. Read along with me. 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up its seven pillars. Interesting number seven usually always has to do with spiritual completeness. Something that's made it, something that's full. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. Jesus Christ is wisdom. The meat of Jesus Christ is the food of this very word that we're reading. The wine mixed is the blood. It's mixed as in all the blood of the, all the peoples of the earth. He's mixed it. He's allowed everyone to come to him that wine is mixed. She has sent her servants. And she calls from the highest point of the city. Jesus is calling every one of us. Providing we have the good sense to listen. Let all who are simple come to my house. This simple means basic good intentioned people, but they're usually carnal. They're in the simple state of understanding of God's word. Not really the New Testament, but more so live in the Old Testament vein. Let all who are simple come to my house to those who have no sense, she says. Jesus is talking to us who have no sense, no spirituality, but only carnality. Come eat my food. There's the bread, there's the word of God. And drink the wine I have mixed. This is the understanding. Wisdom and understanding. Leave your simple ways and you will live. Come out of the plastic churches, he's saying, and come into the spiritual way of thinking, and you can have spiritual life. Walk in the way of insight. Insight's an interesting word here, because you walk in the way on the inside, what you know on the inside, internally, spiritually, not externally, not, not uh, carnally. Not to keep knocking the carnal, we all need a health a healthy carnal, we all need to feed our carnal to get to the spiritual, but it's much more important to be spiritual than carnal. Whosoever corrects a mocker invites insult. Whosoever rebukes the wicked occurs abuse. You ever try to share the Word of God with somebody who didn't want to live internally and didn't want to live spiritually but enjoys living the life of the carnal? They'll do all those things to you. Do not rebuke mockers or they will hate you. Makes me think of the old verse, don't cast your pearls before swine. Like these words in these Bibles are, um, are our pearls. If somebody's not ready to hear them, all the thumping of a Bible and all the talking about it in the world can't make a difference. They have to want it, just like a drunk wanting to get off of booze. You can tell him to get off booze, but until he wants to get off booze, he ain't going nowhere but booze. Instruct a wise, the wise, instruct the wise, and they will be wiser still. This is somebody who's looking for God. Teach the righteous, and they will add to their learning. This is somebody with an open heart, an open spirit. This is somebody who doesn't hate God. This is somebody who's willing to, to, uh, to absorb uh, something of the Word of God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We've got to stick with the subject here. The, steer of the, the fear of the Lord is, a, is the beginning of wisdom. We can't grow spiritually until we have a healthy reverence for God. Until we get that healthy reverence for God, uh, 
we don't have a chance at beginning to have wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For through wisdom your days will be many. Now many of these uh, Bible commentators, uh, I notice uh, even Matthew Henry, uh, uh, Jimmy Swaggart, and many others, they all want to point out that this doesn't necessarily mean adding days onto your life, but more so the quality of days in your life. But I happen to believe, through my own personal experience of healing, that it will add days to your life for the simple reason that once you become um, closer to God, you will quit poisoning yourself as bad. You will, uh, you will eat better. You will feel better. Your, your peace of mind and heart will give you peace over the troubled waters. And your blood pressure will go down. So and I think it does, in fact, add days to your life. It says, For through wisdom your days will be many, and years will be added to your life. And I think we have to take that uh, both internally and externally. If you are wise, your wisdom will uh, reward you. If you are a mocker, you alone will suffer. Self-explanatory. Folly is an unruly woman, and before nine, we were reading at seven uh, about this uh, this old gal that would sit outside of her porch, and she was tricking in this young, simple man off the street, and she kissed him, and she talked him into coming and lay down with her in bed, and this was all likenesses for um, the carniality of the human mind, and how we let ourselves be deceived by others who are deceived, uh, which is the plastic churches, I call them, of this world. And the, the people who all act like they know so much about God, but yet read little of this mingled wine and bread that God gives us to read to shape us and secure us in His heart. And um, we, don't, uh, we don't need to be taken in by this woman because she will kiss you. She will give you. Her bed will smell perfumey, as the scripture says. And she will tell you that let's stay here and love all night long. But the love that you're having is with a strange woman. It's not with wisdom. A woman that is good for us, for our souls. So that, that to keep in mind. It says here she is simple and knows nothing. And that's where I get that. That she doesn't read or have understanding. She's just a lot of feel-good words, um, a lot of harsh crap that doesn't take you very far. She sits at the door of her house, and this is referring back to uh, Proverbs 7, on a seat at the highest point of the city. Today, people, they still sit in those high seats. You see them on TV all the time. You see them, hear them on the radio. You see them on the DVDs, all preaching, but never really quite get around to actually reading the Word of God on the seat at the highest point of the city, calling out to those who pass by. These are people that are looking but don't know what they're looking for. Uh, these are people that, uh, that are trying to fill their brains but not trying to fill their hearts, who go straight on their way. Let all who are simple come to my house, she says. To those who have no sense, she says, stolen waters is sweet. This is her talking. Food eaten in secret is delicious. Stolen waters, the waters is referred to uh, the peoples, the churches, the many peoples. The Bible always refers to waters. Stolen, why are they stolen? Because they all holler the name of Jesus and they preach the name of Jesus, but yet they're talking crap all the time. And that is stolen waters. Uh, this is the people that seek, but they don't know what they seek and is what these waters are. Uh, the food eaten in secret is delicious. Uh, in other words, everything that is, is self-willed is on the inner, but they get from their own minds, their own, de their own uh, deceptions. Uh, yeah, it's delicious to the carnal, and it'll get you by in the carnal, but there's a, there's a wall that you're coming to in this state. And she's taking advantage of these people and collecting them. But little do they know that the dead are there and her guests 
are deep in the realm of the dead. Now, most of these Bibles refer to that as a, as a shiu, a hell. Um, and to me, my personal belief is that this is hell that we're in, this earth, and it's also heaven. Uh, it's my personal belief. Because when you have the kingdom, when the kingdom has come on earth as it is in heaven, uh, you you live in a state of heaven. You don't live in a state of fear and dread and drunkenness and drugs and all the things that people run to to look for happiness. You live in a world of, of uh, accepting Jesus Christ and living as Jesus asked us to live. Uh, that's heaven to me. Now, I could tell you stories about a hellish life on earth, but I'm sure you have your own. And, and uh, the simple message here is don't wait for the kingdom of God to have your heaven. This is a place of death. To come out of this death is to open your heart and your mind. Uh, to Jesus Christ and not be deceived not be fooled by that uh, this woman who this Bible talks about who are the plastic churches and folly we need to seek wisdom and understanding it says in one of these earlier books to take her as your best friend and wisdom and understanding as uh, as your good friend as well so that's the spiritual flip for nine. I've really been enjoying reading uh, Proverbs. And uh, Proverbs is really truly about our own hearts. The, these stories of the Old Testament are not about uh, old dead people that don't matter to us. They're about us and today. They're about our lives. And uh, they're very important for our own understanding. Of course, we have to be open and ready to accept that. So if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ in your heart, uh, I, like so many of my brothers and sisters, invite you um, to do that. It don't take much. Just a quiet prayer to yourself, asking God to come into your heart and give you understanding of the things that you don't. And if your life is not particularly happy, then ask God to, uh, to give you wisdom and understanding. And even though your circumstances of what makes you unhappy may not change, your ability to accept it and live with it in happiness will. So for that being said, I love you. And come back uh, another time and do a little reading with me in this series of uh, the Spiritual Flip. I love you. And now it's time to go fishing. Amen.